Hi, my name is Barry Sterling Mitchell. I produce the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings, and this is Ben and Barry on football. My name is Ben Dickerson. That's me. And I'm your co-host, lover of anything football, especially the NFL. I'm also a fantasy geek. Uh, I think I had uh, six teams in the championship going into the championship last week in fantasy. I won three of those six. This has been a very poor year for me. But every five or six years, I have a bad season. So I'm going to chalk this one up as one of those. And hopefully I'll do better next year. I see you giving yourself permission to go uh, have a bad have a bad year, right? <laughs> hey, it's fantasy, man. Anything can happen. But I have more good than bad, so I'll take it. Well, when you're the owner, you, you can make those choices. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not Jerry Jones. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not Jerry Jones. I understand the reality of this thing. Um, Ben's thing is fantasy. Uh, I dabble in Madden. Uh, let me just let you know, right up front, I did play my game against the Seahawks. We're going to talk. We, we have a number of things we're going to talk about. Number one, we will go over the top 12 in the categories that we feel are uh, most important being average turnovers, average points against, average points for, and those last two, if you take the difference, is average net points. So we're going to look at the top 12 in that area. We'll take a quick look last, uh, last week, see how we did uh, relative to the Bias Plus reports and how the Bias Plus report did as we go over last week's games. We're going to look forward to the next week and do the Bias Plus Report show, also known as the matchup show. <laughs> um, and then we, we have some random comments, and we'll take a quick look at our social media and we'll wrap this up. Today is December 25th. That's how dedicated we are. <laughs> on the right. holiday. We, work on we work on Christmas. We work on Christmas. Hey, look, when I was uh doing phone work. Christmas was like double time and a half. I'm like, can I work 12 hours today, please? Right, right. <laughs> Presents are under the tree, bro. My job is done. You know time to I mean? make, make more donuts. Look, look, and I'm not really trying to get heavy into it. You know, I'm, I don't want to be Scrooge, but I saw a stat that was kind of astounding when you look at it relative to uh, another stat, which I'll mention real quick. Black Friday, I guess that's the biggest shopping day of the holiday or whatever, $9.4 billion in sales on that one day. Wow. You put that in the context of our children carrying $1.5 trillion in college debt. <laughs> all of a sudden, things look a little different, don't they? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. Definitely. Yeah, let's keep it. Let's keep it logical. Let's keep it in mind. You know, and let's not get carried away with the emotions and all of that when it comes to buying. That's how they get you, man. They get you with the, with the diamond ring and the guys. You know, the loving couple. The, you know, that they used to do you where you would sell the car. You know, they would have the no, excuse me, give the car as a gift, right? So they got the car with the. With the bow on oh, top, right. you know, now, to the wife or whoever, and she's giving it to you. Now, these people are buying their own gifts. <laughs> They're like, yeah, look what I bought me. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, thank me. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, man. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> All right, Benny, let's take a quick look here. We're going to go to the first of our top 12. Let's see if I can make this so that it's very easy to see, hopefully. How you feeling about that? You see that okay? Yeah, I see that great. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so uh, bottom to top, uh, number 12, we have our Arizona Cardinals actually in a three-way tie on average. ATD is average turnover differential. That's the difference between the takeaways and the giveaways. And if you look at 12, 11, and 10, you'll see I'm lockstep at 0.3 average turnovers per game. And again, this is a stat that can be either positive or negative. This is the positive side. So you're looking at the top 12. We chose 12 because that's how many playoff spots are there. So we 
looking at that correlation between our statistics and the uh, playoffs. And as you can see by the letters, and Baltimore Ravens are the only ones that have the uh, two little uh, uh, symbols there, meaning that they pretty much have locked up home court. They've locked it all up. They can't do any better than what they've done right there. Uh, the X's and the Z's, you know, where you either made the playoffs or you won your division, they're all there, but there's still things to be determined. So point three, you get up to nine, uh, to nine, you have point four with your Buffalo Bills and eight and seven at about a half a turnover differential. The Chiefs, Chiefs showing up in the top 12, Ben. And the Steelers at point five, and we know they've been strong. So let's stop there with the first half or the bottom half of the top 12. Any comments you have on that? Uh, what I like to say is that let's start with number seven, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Started off really hot. Bunch of takeaways, not many giveaways, but they've been riding that for a long time, and things have kind of changed over there in the Steel City. Um, things aren't so great on that defense anymore, mostly because the offense can't generate much, but uh, they've only dropped to seven. Kansas City, I would say, is probably coming on. Their defense is playing better, more takeaways than giveaways. And, of course, Patrick Mahomes holds on to the ball pretty well, protects the ball. Uh, their offense is really good. Buffalo Bills sitting in a nice place, really good defense. Um, not great in the takeaway department. They're more uh, stronger, I think we'll see, in the uh, points against category. Same thing with the Tennessee Titans. Um, kind of the same thing with the Niners. My question to you is, how does it feel to have the Arizona, Arizona Cardinals sitting at the same number you are in any category? You know, um, last week, I'm going to use your word on you again. Okay, go ahead. I was talking about potential intriguing games of the week. Uh, you're right. I threw the Cardinal game out there, and you, let me put air quotes up, poo-pooed it. I did. I did. I poo-pooed it. I did. And, and let me tell you, uh, watching some, some film and some interviews, they interviewed uh, uh, Cliff Kingsbury, coach of the Arizona Cardinals. And he, they were talking about one particular play, and he's like, yeah, we stole this one from the Ravens. <laughs> so he might be running the air raid, but whatever the Ravens are running, he's incorporating a little bit of that in there too, man. So uh, it, it, that was an interesting game. I was very surprised at that. Very surprised. All right. Number six, Baltimore Ravens. We just talked about them guys at .7. That's where they're, they're all under just under one uh, turnover, net turnover, or average turnover um, differential. Uh, Seahawks, Saints, and Packers all at .8. Vikings at point nine. Man, I can't wait till we talk about that game. That was the intriguing game of the week last week for me. And then right on top of all this, as they have been pretty much all season, right? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much all season. We're talking about the New England Patriots. They're the only ones above an average of one turnover uh, differential per, uh, you know, not per average turnover differential at one and a half. So long story short, don't play around with the Patriots. They, as they're starting to, to find a little bit of groove uh, offensively. We'll talk about that. All right. Okay. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to move. Um, I want to set this up and make sure that we have this. Yeah. All good. All good. Um, we're going to talk about average points against. Now, this is defense. They say uh, offense sells tickets, defense wins championships. All right. Can you see that okay? Yes, sir. It looks good. All right. So, LA Chargers having to show up in the top 12, which means that 
if their defense is holding teams to an average point against of 20.9, that's under 21 points, you're telling me that Phillip Rivers can't do better than that on an ongoing basis. That's, I'm a little surprised. Dallas Cowboys leading all the yardage figures, points against, they're giving up 20. Broncos giving up 20. So those are your 20 group. Your 19 group would be the Packers, the Niners, and the Chiefs. That's an interesting grouping of defense. Uh, my Niners have, have won, but they've given up a lot of points. And that, like in that last win there, that was like 30 points that they gave up. Like really threw up through that average uh, out a little bit, and really knocked it out. If, if you look, if you were to look at the last three weeks for the Niners, which, which I did, they literally are in 31st place for uh, points against in the last three weeks. Wow. So they really got hit up bad. Wow. Uh, 35.3 average over the last three weeks. So um, some things, you know, when you always say, how do you feel about your team? I'm like, oh, I'm a little concerned here. There, There's some reasons to be. But we average 30 points. Uh, you know, we're up in that area. We'll talk about that in terms of scoring. All right. 18 point group. You're talking the Vikings, the Bears, and the Steelers, and the Ravens all giving up at 18 uh, point area, just under 19 points. We'll stop there. That's number three before we go to your favorite defensive team of the year and the obvious leader. What do you, what do you got on defense for me? Well, I'm going to start at the bottom, but I'm going to make it really quick. The LA Chargers have had trouble stopping every and anybody, but they haven't been really blown out that often. They did have a couple of really bad games defensively. Um, they're getting no help from their offense, and it seems to get worse and worse every week. Dallas Cowboys, for the supposedly great and talented offense that they have, and on paper it obviously is a very talented offense, the defense has a lot of holes, and I just feel like they're getting out schemed. They're going to have to look at their offensive and defensive coordinators uh, sometime in the off offseason. Denver Broncos, I'll give them kudos for holding teams to 20 or an average of 20 per game because uh, their offense has really struggled. Uh, the Packers, up and down. Niners, up and down, but should not be, uh, except for they've gotten in some really big shootouts. But if you go back and look at their schedule, Niners had a rough schedule. Y'all played a bunch of really good teams in a short period of time. Um, I, I don't know what to say except uh, – Mr. Shanahan has got to make sure that he scores a lot of points every week uh, because some of these better offensive teams have given you guys trouble. Uh, Kansas City has never been great on defense, but they are getting better. And where are we stopping at? The 18s, Minnesota. I don't know what to say about these guys. I, their defense, obviously, they had a stat on Xavier Rhodes, who was the best corner on that team and was a top corner in the entire league for the last three, four years, who is having a bad season this year where he's, get, he's got like an 80% something completion rate against him personally. Uh, that's not helping if he's supposed to be their best cover guy. They got trouble. They said he went from best cover to most targeted. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> and, it, you know, it only takes, it only takes a team or two to start pointing out some flaws in a certain guy and teams will go after him. I mean, they don't look at all that film for nothing. They've discovered a, a, a flaw in his uh, cover skills and they're uh, exploiting it. I don't know if perhaps he's playing with some minor injury or it's mental, but yeah, he's having trouble. Uh, the bears. Here's a stat for you, Ben. What's that? Last three weeks. Number three in points against Minnesota at 13.3. Number two, Green Bay at 12.6. And number one, Kansas City Chiefs at 7.3. Right, right. You know, you were right when you pointed about, out about the Niners. There are teams who have what looked like obvious 
easy, you know, very winnable games on their last three to four week schedule, like say the Eagles and the Cowboys, right? The game teams they're playing, they're supposed, you know, obviously they're not in, in the winning columns, you know, and they're not threatening big time to be playoff teams. Whereas like with the Niners, it seemed like everybody in that last four weeks was that type of a, of a quality team. So you, you absolutely were correct on that. Yeah, that's, that's now you can look at that two ways. You can say, well, they, they got exposed by other top teams and that may not bode well for them in the playoffs. But then again, uh, there's that thing called battle tested playoff ready. Uh, they're seeing these teams now. They may, may see a couple of them again somewhere along the line and, uh, they should be better prepared. Yeah, yeah, you know, battle tested. As long as you're not beaten up, you know, in that the the uh, and they've won their share of those games. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the ones that we lost again, very winnable. You know, a, a, a kick here, a kick there, type of thing. You know what I mean? And we still put up the thirty. That's the one thing. As much as they question. A Garoppolo, et cetera, and we'll talk about that, what their schedule is. Uh, you left off at the Vikings? Uh, yeah, I had a couple more 18-point games there, teams there. Uh, the Bears, oh, what I was going to say about the Bears and, uh, well, about the Bears is a team that was good against the pass early on, mostly because of their pass rush, but never really that good against the run. And now things are beginning to even out. The pass rush isn't as great. They're not getting to the quarterbacks like they were. Therefore, they're giving up a good number of points. They're, they've taken some, some bad beatings. Even though the offense has started to wake up, uh, they're having their problems, and they can't really stop people running the ball. Pittsburgh, um, their defense has been trying to carry them the entire season, but their offense is really dragging them down. Um, but again, early success has them high in the rankings. Um, and the Ravens, um, not spectacular on defense, very opportunistic defense. And they've been able to show, uh, that when they're ahead because of their dynamic offense, that they can really grind you into the ground. So I got to give them credit for that. They haven't been truly exposed. I think they only had really one or two really high-scoring games, um, you know, uh, shootout-type games. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll give them uh, a little credit for, for being able to put teams away when they have to. Okay. All right. All right. So you're finishing out three. As I said, we had Baltimore the, with the 18, and then you go to the Bills, Anything in particular you want to say about the Bills defense? You've been touting them all season. <laughs> I love the Bills. I love the Bills defense. Um, what can I say? Again, their offense is not bad, but it's pretty rudimentary, if that's a good word to use. Uh, Josh Allen has shown that he can throw the ball, and he's pretty accurate, but they don't really have a dynamic receiving core and they're just now making the transition between uh, a pretty good rookie running back and an old vet headed for the Hall of Fame, I hope, in Frank Gore uh, starting to be on the sideline a little bit more. So their offense is still kind of in transition, but um, their defense, I think, will bode them well in the playoffs. All right, and then in first place again, they've been pretty much there all season with that defense. I mean, that defense is about almost as historic in their performance as the uh, Ravens' offense is. I mean, they're shutting people down at 13.2 points per game and really keeping that window open for Tom Brady because if you're averaging 13 points a game and Tom Brady can put up three touchdowns in a game, you know, one for one and three one per quarter except for one quarter or some one bad quarter then you know they're winning games and that's so if you can win 20, 20 to 13 that's a win it goes in the win column so that is that um, is true i don't know how far that's going to carry them but that is true <laughs> 
We don't know how far that's going to carry him, man. I don't know how far that's going to carry him, but you you don't you never know. <laughs> well, the thing is, um, I don't think that their uh, offense is is. I think it's improving. They looked way better, and we're going to talk about that game um, as we move forward here. I'm just trying to put something together so we can talk about the scoring. Why, that, while you're putting that together, let's not forget the year that Trent Dilfer was the quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens, and they beat the Giants in the Super Bowl. I forget what year it was, but um, they went three games without scoring a uh, an offensive touchdown during the season, and they still won the Super Bowl because of their defense. Because of right, right, and again, that was a historic defense. Absolutely, you know, um, a, a Ravens defense, no doubt. Um, all right, here's your scoring leaders in the top twelve uh, of this group. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight out of the top twelve are playoff bound. Excuse me, you got a couple who have to win a game and have some help, but uh, pretty much everybody else is locked in. So uh, bottom to top, your L.A. Rams coming in at uh, 24 points a game. Uh, your um, – where am I at here? Points, there you go, your L.A. Rams. Um, up through Houston and Tennessee, again, all 24 in that 24-point area. You got Seattle, Dallas, and Minnesota at 25 uh, in that 25-point range, just under 26. So I'll leave it there. Um, see if you have anything you want to say about those guys. Uh, okay, so we're talking about fairly prolific scoring here um, when you look at it on an average per game basis. Um, the Rams, we expect that. Um, although they haven't done it enough or as much as they did the year before. Yeah, I was going to say we expect a little more than that, don't we? <laughs> well, yeah, we would normally expect more from the Rams, but uh, to have them in the top 12 is not a surprise. It's, what's the surprise is, is that they're not higher. Uh, the Houston Texans, with the emergence and the, and the constant um, um, uh, progression of, of Deshaun Watson, uh, they belong there. He carried them a couple of games. Um, Tennessee Titans in the advent of Ryan Tannehill. And uh, A.J. Brown, a rookie receiver, has really helped them put points on the board. Seattle, you got Russell. Russell's going to make as many points uh, happen as he needs to to get wins under normal circumstances. Um, Dallas Cowboys, again, talented offense. Talent across the board. When they put their schemes together and they have the teams uh, scattered properly and they run their offense properly, they have success and they put up points. And when they don't, they don't. Uh, same thing with the Vikings. Same thing with the Vikings. The only thing that can take the Cowboys and the Vikings down uh, as far as getting outscored is coaching, if you ask me. That's the simple answer because for the talent that they have on the team, it just seems like things aren't clicking on offense against certain opponents. And there's a, there's a crazy reason for that because the skill position players are there. And, and of course the Patriots, uh, we know their troubles. Uh, they don't have the, uh, the stellar group of skill position players that some of these other teams have yet somehow, some way they put things together. So they're where they are because of coaching and the teams below them are probably there, or at least the Vikings and the Cowboys are where they are because of coaching. You know, it's in interesting, um, and, and I've had that conversation about the, the – uh, we'll talk about that game of coaching being an issue in that Vikings, you know, game yeah. for the Vikings. Um, but if you really think about it, 28 points is one touchdown a quarter. Right. <laughs> you know, 15-minute quarters. And if you can get one touchdown a quarter, you're in the top five right. <laughs> scoring around here. Uh, Tampa Bay coming in. Uh, okay, let's just stop. We'll let we'll let you say what you want. Tampa Bay and your boy Jameis, if you have anything to say relative to scoring on them. <laughs> Why are you pulling them out? We didn't do the Saints and the Chiefs. <laughs> you're going to just eliminate them from the <laughs> – 
The Saints, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, the Saints and the Chiefs, 27, 28 points. That's the, the 28 points that I was talking about. Right. Um, which is, and, you know, if that's what it is, that's what it is. One that, touchdown a quarter on average. That, you look at those two offenses, that's the least we expect from them. So, <laughs> so they should be happy where they are and expect to improve and get better and, and do what they have to do to, to put points up in the playoffs. So, yes, I, I can't say a lot about them. Now we'll talk about the old Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They are who we thought Jameis Winston was. <laughs> I'm not going to let you get away with that line much longer. Buddy. <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's a classic. They, they are who we thought they were and all that stuff. And you can shape it any way you want and make it fit. So that's all I'm doing. But this guy, man, he's unbelievable. He has put – I tell you what. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers got a long way to go. And they've got a lot of decisions to make in, in a lot of positions. Um, but Jameis Winston can score some touchdowns, man. And if you had him on your fantasy team, he probably carried you to the playoffs. He probably he could have carried you to the playoffs week after week after week. I don't think there was a week when he – maybe one or two weeks when he scored less than three touchdowns. Of course, he probably went a couple of weeks where he threw less than three interceptions, too. But <laughs> but the man put points on the board. You know, when I, you know, I watched the game, first pass, pick six, and then, you know, the talk about the philosophy of how you can just forget that and go to the next one. You know what I mean? Right. And he's got that philosophy. That, that part is entrenched. And basically, I said a couple weeks ago, if he can just reduce his turnovers by one, because he's so prolific relative to scoring, it could really be a, a big um, help to his team. And, and you, you, know, you can get away with one or two if you're putting up those types of scoring numbers, you know? So... All right, where were we here? We were about to do the last or the top two in scoring here. So, again, my beloved San Francisco 49ers, 30-point in game team. I didn't see them as a 30-point team, you know, this year. But, you know, they are, they are who, I, who I wish they are. <laughs> <laughs> they are who I told you they could be. Okay, I hear you. Right? I hear you. We didn't expect 30 points a game on average from these guys because they were pretty much uh, recognized as a running team, a heavy run team. And um, because in the search for balance, they tripped and stumbled and found their, themselves with uh, Emmanuel Sanders and a Debo Samuel emerges and even a, Kel a, a Kendrick Bourne. Kendrick Bourne. Where did he come from? Did, all the guy does is get first downs. I mean, hey, they've gotten some games where they've had to put points up, and they had to test Jimmy G more than they probably wanted to, and he has pretty much come through. Pretty much. Third and 16 came through, pretty came much. up with another third and 16, hit him deep. Right in the heart, set them up for the win. That was big. That was big. Okay, we'll talk about that later. And the Ravens at 33.5 points per game. Ah, well, I, I tell you what. I don't think anybody has fully figured out their offense yet. Um, they did get a little trouble from someone. My mind is so rattled with – statistics and, and past games that I can't remember who it was, but I think the word blueprint got used. And then that went right out the window because Lamar Jackson is just so much better than anybody expected him to be um, besides the, the, the Baltimore brain trust. I mean, they seem very confident that they were going to be able to put a new Lamar Jackson out there and they have done it. And I can't stop praising John Harbaugh and his staff. Um, for the things that they've done for this young man. And, and, but I got to give him uh, all the respect in the world too, because he has trusted them. 
and he has worked on the little things that he needed to work on as far as his accuracy and his timing and getting rid of the ball and learning his receivers. And, uh, you know, the running thing is just, he's just a freak, man. People are on Facebook saying, actually arguing about if he is as good as Michael Vick. And we know statistically, yeah, okay, he broke Vick's record or whatever. But Michael Vick, if you go back and look, he ran mostly because he had to. Lamar Jackson runs mostly because it's designed for him. So you add on his scrambles and his ad libs, and that's why the record got broken. He's just he's just special, man. The dude is just special. Well, and he's focused um, on that Super Bowl. You got to love that that level of focus uh, from a guy who's got, uh, I guess, somewhat of a chip on his shoulder. That that picture of him on on. Uh, Draft day, you know, sitting by himself, with yeah, father, whatever, yeah. man, feeling a bit dejected and taking it out on everybody now. So, very interesting scenario here. Okay, uh, let's get to the piece de resistance for this uh, part of the show, the average net point. So, it's really nice to score a lot of points, but just like – in your uh, personal financial life with your net worth statement, if you're making a hundred thousand and you're spending a hundred and one thousand at a whole nother level. And these are the teams that are not overspending. They are scoring more than what they are giving up. Uh, consequently, they are in the positive. And as you can also, I don't know if you can see right here, but, uh, the net points, again, is a stat that can be either positive or negative. Your bottom half of your league generally is in the negative. Uh, for example, Miami uh, is a minus 13 net points, and they rank 32nd. So that just gives you an idea about how bad it can get. Number 12 is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So we're talking about Jameis as a prolific scorer. But we're talking about all of his turnovers, net, net, average net point win of one point. <laughs> so hmm. he's spending way more. He's spending just about taking in. L.A. Rams at 1.8 and the Tennessee Titans at 3.3. I'll leave it at that. And let's see what do you have to say about any of those three at this point. Uh, the only reason Tampa Bay is probably on the plus side is because their uh, their run defense. Uh, teams haven't been able to just run up and down the field on them. Therefore, it's tough to control the game. Therefore, it's always uh, I got to outscore Jameis. So that kind of puts them up there. The okay. Rams are kind of the same. The Rams have had a lot of problems on defense. Some days they come and they look like uh, they're 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 back to Super Bowl form. They got the pass rush. They got Aaron Donald going, and you know the D backs are making plays. And then the next week. They can't seem to do anything right on defense. So it's tough, even with a high-scoring offense that isn't as high-scoring as it used to be. Um, that puts them on the low end, but they are in the top 12. Tennessee, of course, has been kind of up and down, uh, or, or uh, not up and down, but um, the defense started off really well, kind of went back a little bit. The, deep, the, the offense started off poorly, and then when Tannehill got there, they started to pick it up. So they're just kind of finding a happy medium there as far as offense and defense is concerned. But a plus 3.3, that's that's good for them. They still have a playoff shot, don't they? We'll talk about that, I guess. Uh, yes, they do. They okay. do. And, All right, that's um, cool. I, I don't want to get lost in the uh, scenarios, so we'll take that and leave it at that. Number mm -hmm. nine – your Packers do, do have a letter beside their name at four average net points. Uh, this is on the plus side. Buffalo Bills, 4.1. That's an interesting uh, 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 neighborhood right there. The Bills and the Packers, both went around the same net points. Your five group is your Cowboys and your Saints. Again, interesting uh, neighborhood there at about, uh, at about five and a half uh, net points per game. And your Minnesota Vikings at number five with plus 7.1 
net points per game. So we'll leave it there, give you a chance to, to mention these guys. Uh, I'd say everybody kind of belongs where they are. Um, after last week's games, I know people will have questions about certain teams. Um, from the Saints on up, they've clinched. Uh, obviously, Buffalo and, 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 and Green Bay have their spots. But from the Saints on up, they've clinched. The only team um, that's in the mix, in the high mix, like in the top 10 mix, but hasn't really clinched yet is the Dallas Cowboys, who gave everybody tons of hope after they blew out the Rams and then almost little to no hope after losing to the Philadelphia Eagles. So they're a big maybe right now. I know I declared them as going to make it, um, but I believe the only way they get in is if they win and the Eagles lose. So that's a tough one for them. But the Saints, they're cool. Um, I would expect the number to be higher, but it will, it will rise um, in the playoffs. Uh, the Vikings, I don't know. I don't know if last week was a blip or not. So it's hard to say with those guys. Yeah, Vikings, um, and we'll talk a little more about the game real, you know, when we move to the next uh, segment. But uh, there's some issues there coaching-wise, quarterback-wise, and protection-wise. Uh, which I guess goes back to coaching. But, all right, here we go. With number four, your Chiefs at 8.9. So we're still in the single digits. Average net points per game. And, again, in the last three weeks when I'm looking at net points, uh, the Chiefs are actually in first place at 16.7. So uh, in the last three weeks, they've been really balling out and winning nicely. Uh, the Niners coming in at third again, the double digits. Let's stop with the Chiefs. Anything you want to say about them? Uh, well, I mean, as far as net points is concerned, they're where they belong. Um, they haven't been as prolific offensively, but uh, that's due to uh, injuries to the running backs probably. So they can't stay as balanced as they would like. But Andy Reid draws up a nice passing scheme every single week and when you have Patrick Mahomes who can follow that scheme through that's going to put you on the plus side for most of the time even if it's only 8.9 it's a win is a win so all right number three we have my beloved San Francisco 49ers at 10.9 number two is the Patriots and number one at am I looking at that right what's that number there 15 4 Points, average net points per game. That's a nice two touchdown a win margin on an average basis. And if you can do keep it up like that, you're really doing something. Let me mention, it's really interesting uh, when you're looking at net points. Um, the one team that I don't see he – oh, there it is. They're the Saints. They're there. Uh, the Saints – are number four over the last three weeks. So where are they here? Ah. Number, number six? Yeah, they're six yeah. overall. So you got to keep an eye on them guys, man. Drew Brees playing like a, a, a king. And, um, you know, he's got the receivers. Uh, you text me. Uh, what's his name? The receiver. Michael Thomas, Michael Thomas in capital letters, baby. Breaking the record, making history. Can't guard Mike. Can't guard Mike, man. So there you go. All right, uh, so that, that wraps up the top 12 section of this before we move on to the um, review of last week. Any, anything you want to say about the top 12? No, I like it. I like, I like the way things are setting up. Uh, the only thing you need to decipher as you look at that is who's playing well and who's not at the moment. But as we've seen over the past couple of weeks, those things can change very quickly from week to week. So, <laughs> yeah, going into the Dallas game, the Rams were in the top of the last three, you know, rankings for like net points and stuff. They were looking really good. And they got in front of the Cowboys and, you know, disappeared. Who knows what happened? All of that momentum stopped. And then the Cowboys turn around and lose to the Eagles. So, yeah, it, <laughs> it gets badly. Crazy. Badly. Yeah. yeah. 
look bad doing it, much less. We'll talk about that in the next segment um, when we look at last week's Bias Plus reports. All right, Ben, so in um, this section, we're going to take a quick look at the Bias Plus report for week 16, see how we did, and then see what we have to say about the games. Man, some surprises last week, some real surprises. All right, let's start off uh, at the top, Jacksonville, Atlanta. The Bias Plus was in Atlanta's favor. And what do we have on that? That was a yes. Atlanta did win that game, right? Yes, that is correct. And again, uh, oh, before we get started, um, I really thought, again, this is the second week in a row when I felt really good about my picks. And I felt super good about them because I went with the bias almost every time uh, on, on the games that I lost. And the bias and I both lost – just about the same games. So <laughs> I'm not exactly sure uh, what to say about that other than any given Sunday, the NFL is the greatest sports league in the world and teams can win at any time, at any moment, um, regardless of whether they have anything going on or not. Now, that being said, obviously uh, I did win the Atlanta game. I did pick Atlanta along with the bias. Um, they're just better than Jacksonville. The wheels are falling off. They fired um, Tom Coughlin. This guy, <laughs> when he was the Giants quarterback, I loved him. I thought they needed all the discipline they could get. I come from the old school of coaching where I think discipline is, is necessary. But this dude went overboard, man. He went way overboard. Like, they said he fined so many players and a lot of them for some of the smallest things that even the NFL office was beginning to say, yo, what's up with this dude? And finally, because a lot of people were like, well, why don't they just wait to the end of the season and fire him? He had to go. He's really rubbing players the wrong way. And that, that kind of makes Jalen Ramsey and Leonard Fournette um, kind of look like they knew what they were talking about when they were saying that there's somebody in the front office or they just kind of said the front office in general, I don't think they named him, but uh, that they, they did, they weren't on the player's side, so to speak. When I pulled up that list, the three um, games on Saturday on that list. So let's talk about them real quick. Uh, we're look, talking about Houston, Tampa Bay, Buffalo, New England, and the Rams against the Niners. Um, Houston, Tampa Bay. Houston came up 23-20. Jameis had 335 yards passing. Again, they don't mention his turnovers. <laughs> That's a separate category. What did you have about that game? Anything in particular? Okay, here's the crazy thing. I picked the Buccaneers to win. Um, they should have won. They could have won. Deshaun Watson was really off. 19 for 32 is not good at all. 184 yards is way below uh, what he should be doing, especially when their running game is mediocre at best. He threw an interception also. Um, Carlos Hyde, talking about their running game, only had 27 yards on the ground. He did have a short touchdown. Uh, but the Texans' defense sacked Jameis three times, intercepted him four times, and got a fumble recovery and run one of the interceptions back for a touchdown. So there you have it. Texans defense wins <laughs> over, over Jameis Winston. Because that's basically who the game was against or yeah. between. Uh, Buffalo, New England, 24-17. Uh, New England, they were uh, had a bias plus score in their favor of 10. So the uh, bias held up in that particular case. Yes, and this particular game, I went against the bias because I loved the Buffalo Bills, and I thought this was a game that they could really win. Uh, the first game they played against the Patriots was very close. This one actually was close. They won by uh, Patriots only won by a touchdown. Um, the Bills' defense uh, recovered a fumble. 
uh, but they weren't able to sack or intercept Tom Brady. Uh, again, that's why they're at the top of the turnover differential because they protect the ball. Um, Josh Allen, oh man, very inaccurate game. Now he did throw some good passes. He did score two touchdowns. He did throw for two touchdowns, but he only went for 208 yards and the rest of his day was pretty mediocre. And uh, he had his issues also, got sacked three times and um, just really had a tough day. Brady didn't have a great day either. Threw for 271, he did throw a touchdown pass, but the story of this game was on the ground. And, you know, every time people decide to start trying to find things about the Patriots where they're lacking or things that are going to be their stumbling block, somehow, some way, they turn it back up. And for them to have as much success on the ground as they did against the Buffalo Bills defense, teams should start to worry. Teams should start to worry that the New England Patriots are still around they can still run the ball on you. And, you know, if Brady doesn't have a great day, they can still get it done on the ground. And if they're not getting it done on the ground, they've still been winning through the air. Games might be close, but they're getting it done. Sony Michelle went for 96. Rex Burkhead, of all people, only got 20 on the ground, scored a rushing touchdown, but he had 77 yards in receptions. He's a fullback. The return of the fullback. You know, I love fullbacks, man. The fullback is back. You check song. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. You no? Know? I mean, that's your power game right there. Especially, you know, a, a guy like uh, um, Burkhead, kind of like you check, you can put him in a tight end position, in a fullback position, or you can put him in a single back and let him bang on some people. But they, they were talking about the fullback that the um, Patriots, I guess, kind of recently brought into the fold. And um, this guy on that touchdown run that uh, Burke had had, he was, he was knocking people down, man. He, he, was, he was really uh, a big part of that whole little explosion. You saw when Burke had, like, kind of crashed through the two guys and, like, broke out into the open and, and scored the touchdown. He had a fullback in there helping him with that dirty work early on. And then all of a sudden things just opened up. He was free to the goal line. Man. And the funny thing is in, in Belichick fashion, that guy's a linebacker by trade. He right. is not, he's not really a fullback. He's a linebacker that they use in short yardage situations. And the guy gets the job done. Absolutely. Uh, Lakers, Lakers, Los <laughs> Angeles. <laughs> That's later oh, tonight, man. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Check my watch. I don't miss today. that game. Yeah, but basketball today. No football. I'm like, Christmas? No football? This is yeah, so Christmas is basketball day. It's a basketball day, man. So we'll have to, when we wrap this up, we'll have to get on to that, man. Start checking out some round ball. But Rams at Niners. Niners came out 34-31. Niners were a 10.4 bias plus favorite in that. So the bias held up. Uh, you went with the bias, right? Yes, I went with the bias, got the win. Um, I just, first of all, it would have been hard to pick the Rams after that debacle in Dallas. So, you know, but the Niners are just a, a much better, uh, a, a more a well put together team than the Rams are at this point. Um, they, they have direction. They seem to know where they're going. They, they have better balance. Uh, what are you going to say, man? They're, they're supposed to win that game. You're supposed to win that game. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Next up, we talked about uh, Jacksonville. Let's talk about Baltimore, Cleveland, where Baltimore was uh, an 18.8 uh, bias plus score in their favor in that game. So they were definitely supposed to win that game. Oh, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. We're talking about the class of that division and probably the class of the NFC at this point against a team that's just rumbling, bumbling, and stumbling. So I don't Jackson's know. Jackson's listed as the passing leader at 238 yards and the rushing leader at 103. <laughs> Amazing. 
amazing. The only, only, only scary part of that game was uh, Ingram went down with a little calf injury. Um, the first thing I thought of was, oh, my God, that looks like an Achilles. But if it was an Achilles, we'd have heard about it by now. So he's just got a sore calf. He'll probably sit out next week, and he should be fine. All right, next up we have the New Orleans-Tennessee game uh, where New Orleans was a 1.5 uh, favorite in that, and they came out with a 10-point win, 38-28. to 28. But early on, it looked like Tennessee wanted to do something in that game. <laughs> Kudos to the Tennessee Titans and Ryan Tannehill and their coaching staff. Uh, they've really improved their team over uh, – the way they were last year. I really like Tennessee. I like the uniforms. I like everything about them that I said I didn't like about them in the beginning of the year. <laughs> that, that, that Tannehill move, I'm telling you, that Tannehill move changed their entire organization. It's crazy. They are a viable, still a viable uh, uh, playoff contender. It's going to come down to this last week. Hopefully for them, Derrick Henry will be ready to go. And uh, we'll talk about the, the lineups of games next week. But um, the Texans got to watch out. They're still – it's not the – did they clinch the division or they clinched the spot? I think they clinched the spot. I don't know if they clinched the division. Yeah, I don't think so. The uh, Titans can sneak in there. Um, and, and if they do, I, I will say that they have deserved it because they have really, really uh, improved their team and played much better. Titans. Okay. Where were we here? Uh, Carolina. Indianapolis, 3.4 bias plus score in the favor of the Colts. And it was 38 to 6. <laughs> Looked like it was supposed to be a closer game. Not quite. No, not quite. And uh, there's not a whole lot I can say about Carolina. I think I said last week they, they should be in, in full rebuild mode at this point. Um, the Colts are not great, but they really did the thing to the Panthers. I mean, they're just – they got a lot of stuff they got to work on. They got to deal with what they're going to do with Cam. They got to come up with another quarterback. Um their defense is a shambles. Keekley's on his last leg. Uh, yeah, that, that, that wasn't a hard pick at all. And then I think his name is Naheem Hines. Yeah, Naheem Hines. We're going to talk a little bit about him in the commentary section because okay. uh, I put him up there, man. I'm, when I saw him take off, I was like, uh-oh, who <laughs> is that guy? <laughs> No doubt about it. It was impressive, man, what he did. Um, all right. Let's see now. Cincinnati, Miami. Cincinnati was favored 3.1. They were both in the negative, which is why that's a, in the red there. Miami came up on top 38 to 35 in overtime. And I'm going to save this till later, but uh, – you know, wow. Ryan Fitzpatrick, 419 <laughs> yards, Fitz magic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I beat the bias on this one. I took Miami um, mainly because they were home and mainly because of their head coach, Brian Flores. I really like this guy. I talked about him before. I like his energy. I like the direction that he has the team going in. I think that the team is really buying in to, uh, you know, what he's trying to do and what his staff is trying to do. So I think that's great, especially only getting that short chance in Denver and getting fired. I think he's found a home, and I think he will improve that team. Um, Cincinnati's still tanking for Tua, if you ask me. I, I don't – they're tanking for somebody. I don't know if it's Tua anymore, but <laughs> – I, I didn't think so um, because – I mean, they played hard. But the overtime. Yeah, no, no, no. They, they played hard. It's just – it's 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 the old it's the old trust the process type tank. You know what I mean? 
it's like I, we just don't have the people to hang in there. So we're going to play with what we have. And if we win, hey, all right. And if we lose, hey, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Pittsburgh, New York Jets. Pittsburgh was favored in that one. Um, and yet – it looks like the J E T S Jets 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 sixteen to ten. What a debacle! <laughs> you know, I, I really like Mike Tomlin. I really do. But remember how when when the Eagles weren't doing so well under Andy Reid his last year or two, and we kind of got used to and then tired of his old. Uh, I got to do a better job speech. Uh, although Mike Tomlin doesn't use those exact words, his post-game speeches after losses is starting to sound – I mean, he's a lot more eloquent than Andy used to be, but he's pretty much like, we didn't deserve it. We didn't play well at all. That's really obvious. You know, he's, he's, he's – <laughs> he sounds good saying it, but you're talking about losses, dude. You're talking about losses to the New York Jets. Let me see something. Devin Hodges, 11 for 17, 84 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. Now, he got benched in the middle of that. And then Cuckoo Bird comes in, still <laughs> probably feeling the effects of getting hit in the head with a helmet. He gets injured. He goes out. He's done for the season. And Hodges has to go back in. Right when he was practicing his duck calls for the offseason, they tell him to get get back in there. You know? They, um, what's the guy that they brought back in when they got hit with the helmet? What's his Jason name? Jason Rudolph. Did you see him on the sideline grimacing like, oh. Dude, I, he wants no smoke. <laughs> he's done with this season. He's done with this season. He's he's he might be done with football. He might be done with football. He, he might, might be. be now. Supposedly he has a legitimate injury, but still, he wasn't ready. That uh, he was getting put in that game and having Hodges benched for him was the last thing on his mind. Trust me. So <laughs> that 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 turned out to be real ugly. Sam Darnold, on the other hand, didn't much do much better. Sixteen for twenty six, one seventy four threw for a touchdown. That was a hard game to watch. It really was. Uh, what's his name? Le'Veon Bell did absolutely nothing. I know he can't wait for this season to end. Uh, that was really – that was an ugly game. And somehow, 72 yards for Bell. How much? 72. 72? Very okay. quiet 72. Okay. Well, I don't he think – He came to the game in Pittsburgh colors. <laughs> yeah, that was – that was – yeah. I think he averaged like two point something yards per carry, though. Yeah, so, you're probably right about that. He got a lot of volume as far as carries is concerned, probably because they were holding on to a lead and they just hugged it and held on. The next game, the Giants against the Washington team that needs to change their name. Giants were favored by a very minuscule 1.1 score, a bias plus score in their favor. Uh, and that game went to overtime. They won by, what, six? Um, six points. I guess they scored in overtime, and then that was pretty much it, man. But uh, you, you, Saquon, Jones, Golden Tate showing up all in the stat sheet for your boys there. What's up? Yes, wonderful game. That's why I got my hat on. Um, I really love Daniel Jones. I think Daniel Jones is our future. He threw for almost 400 yards. He threw five touchdown passes. Oh, well, it was only Washington. I don't hear that. He threw for five touchdown passes <laughs> and took them down for the winning score in overtime. That's, that's some real – that's business there. He took care of business. That's my man, you know? Golden Tate come up big after going out with injuries earlier in the season and then coming back to kind of cement himself as the number one receiver over there. And the guy who I said who had emerged as possibly 
the number one receiver of the future, uh, Slayton, actually was out with injury. So that made it tougher on Danny Dimes, and he still got it done through to uh, unknown, what's his name, Caden Smith, unknown tight end, because Ingram is out. Uh, this guy was distributing the ball all over the place. I, I believe I read that um, – Several different receivers had like four catches a piece. Uh, that probably includes Saquon. Um, great game for them. I don't care if they were playing Doherty. <laughs> That's a great game for them, and I am proud of my team. All right. Should be, should be. Um, all right. So what do we have next here? Let's take a quick look. Detroit, Denver, Denver favored by 2.2 bias plus score, and Denver took them 27 to 17 with Drew Locke, Philip Lindsay. Philip Lindsay had one run in that thing, man. He sidestepped a couple steps inside the line of scrimmage and took off, man. And people were grasping at his fumes when he uh when he took off, man. He was out, man. But yeah. That the bias held up on that one. Which way did you go? Uh, I went with the bias. I like Denver. Uh, superior defense against a lackluster offense with a four-string quarterback that just cannot get it done and a defense that's a shambles and a shambles. So that was a pretty easy one for me also. Also, Denver was at home, so. All right. Oakland, L.A. Chargers. I told you I did not trust the Chargers. One iota. They were favored by a bias plus of over seven points, and Oakland took that game 24-17. As the game went on, I remembered your I don't trust the Chargers quote. <laughs> and it, it was ringing in my ears for the entire game. <laughs> and I was like, this is a game I was supposed to pick right. This is a game I was supposed to win. And it wasn't that the Raiders looked so great. It's just that the, the charges look so bad. And Phillip Rivers, who after the game declared that he wants to continue to play, I, I, don't, I have no words for this guy. He's done. Stick a fork in him, really. The only bright spot for the charges was Melvin Gordon. Um, he, and, and he didn't do great, but he did have two rushing touchdowns. Uh, Rivers is, is finished. No touchdown passes. Threw the ball 39 times and couldn't get it in the end zone. Derek Carr, on the other hand, Derek Carr looks good for the future of the Raiders in LA. Uh, I'm sorry, in Las Vegas. Uh, 26 for 30, 291. Threw a touchdown and ran in a touchdown. So, Derek Carr, good for you. They had a picture of the uh, Oakland Raiders uh, stadium in Vegas. They said it looks like a spaceship. <laughs> oh wow, that's crazy. That's so. that's gonna um that's gonna rival Jerry uh, Jerry World, huh? Could be, could be. Next time we uh, have a convention in Vegas, I have to try to get over there and take a look yeah. at that. Dallas, Philadelphia, Dallas had the bias plus in their favor with a score of six point three. Philadelphia won 17 to 9. Carson wins 319 yards to 79. Michael Gallup, 98 yards. Michael Gallup. He had 98 yards in receiving. Yes, he did. Good for him because Amari Cooper, well, <clears throat> I don't know. It's fourth down. You're in four down territory. You got to get a first and you just, like, walk off the field. Uh, there's a question as to whether someone substituted him out or whether he just walked off and they substituted somebody in. Uh, the word I'm hearing is tap out. Something's wrong with Amari Cooper. I don't know what it is. I don't know if maybe he got his hopes up really high for this season and things just aren't working out the way he wants. But he hasn't looked himself the last few weeks. Uh, even in the games that they won. Um, he's not getting the amount of targets he was getting before, and um, the targets he is getting, uh, Dak hasn't looked good. Obviously, Dak is playing with a bad shoulder. Um, very lackluster, 25 for 44, 265 yards. But, again, 
could not throw the ball into the end zone. Carson Wentz, on the other hand, had a really good game. I think you – did you say his stats? Three for three no, I didn't. Okay. 31 for 40, not bad. 319 yards, a touchdown to a bunch of no-name receivers, uh, which is wonderful. Miles Sanders, Penn State. Saquon Jr. Saquon Jr. Saquon's old backup is proving himself to be quite the NFL running back. Carried the ball 29 times, uh, I'm sorry, 20 times for 79 yards, scored a touchdown on the ground, caught five passes for 77 yards. Last week I mentioned his name in the same breath with uh, guys like James White <coughs> who are with, uh, uh, with, the, with the Patriots, but he's better than James White because he can get the ball outside on run plays. He can run between the tackles. He's shifty. He makes people miss. He has great speed, and he can catch the ball. And when you get him the ball in space, obviously he can do a lot of wonderful things. He had a, 156 total yards. 156 total yards. An eagle. Miles Sanders. And one last thing, because I'm always getting on eagle fans. I'm going to say something good about your team because I'll hardly ever say anything good about you. But um, Eagles came to play last week. They came to play. It didn't matter that all the receivers were hurt. It didn't matter. It, none of that mattered. It didn't matter what the Cowboys did the week before against the Rams. None of that mattered. They came out there prepared and determined to win that game. And they won that game. There's no doubt that on that particular day, Wentz was the better quarterback. Um, yes, yes. But I, I got to give Dak a little pass because he's got a bad AC joint. That hurts, man. That hurts. He's, he's obviously wincing and playing in pain. But they declared him healthy, and they know if they're going to do anything, it's got to be with him. So, you know, so I give him a little pass. I don't yeah. know, man. Who's their backup? They have a decent backup, don't they? Um, uh, I don't know. Do they? I think they do. As a matter of fact, I'll double check and see who that is. But you can't play I mean, a backup in a, in a game of that magnitude. Well, it, it, you know, again, he looked bad. He was almost benchable. So, as far as I was concerned, you know, it's a big go. game. If they're going to, I think in a game like that, they're like, well, I'm going to live and die with my best, and just and hope for the best, but. They got thoroughly outplayed on both sides of the ball, so really didn't come down to that, I don't think. I just saw – and, well, you know, I will say this much. His receivers did not help him. Okay? No, they, they didn't. That's what I'm saying. You know, and, and the, it's funny because I, they were trying to tout the Eagles' defense, but I'm sitting there and I'm talking to my wife, an Eagle fan, and I'm saying, you know, I've seen in this game at least four passes – where the receiver was wide open and Dak just didn't hit him. So you exactly. can do if you want to. But if that's either a healthy Dak or an Aaron Rodgers, for example, and they got people open like that in your secondary, you're torched. You're I, I agree with you 100%. So, yeah, that's, that's going to be interesting. Arizona, Seattle. You <laughs> that as a possible intriguing game. I really had a funny feeling that Arizona was going to come to number one. It's a division game. <laughs> number two, you got the two mobile quarterbacks. The mobile quarterback thing is really just changing the dynamic um, of the way teams are playing. And as I mentioned in the previous segment, uh, in an interview with Cliff Kingsbury, they showed a replay of one a particular play and the formation and the play was straight out of the Ravens playbook. So okay. uh, I, I've been actually putting the word out that I think that there is emulation going on across the league where, you know, they're looking at the Ravens and going, you know, man, this really is making a difference. Uh, and when you got a quarterback, let's say like Wentz, I don't think Dak would, you know, is as good at, at that, but he is somewhat mobile when he's healthy. But if you have a quarterback, um, and I wondered, I wondered even in the uh, in the Minnesota Green Bay game, if you look and see at some point, you know, one of them two guys line up in the pistol, handing the ball off, or 
or, or pulling it back out of their belly and, and taking it around the end, especially in a crucial situation. You know, you don't, I don't see that for most quarterbacks that you run it too much, but in a crucial situation where you can have that level of an advantage, I, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity to have. So Arizona did the thing. Um, the bias plus was pointing to Seattle. So I took that one on the chin and consequently Arizona Cardinals were the bias plus buster of the week. Yeah. And well-deserved, well-deserved. They scored 27 points on the Seahawks um, and their defense came through. They sacked Russell five times and recovered a fumble. Um, Kyle they had Patrick Mar- Peterson back in that secondary now. <laughs> yeah, Patrick Peterson has actually had a little better season, I think, than he had uh, last year. Um, right when people were starting to talk kind of bad about him, he put together himself a nice game. He pretty much – they put him on DK Metcalf, mm. which I thought was interesting. And right. Stephen Lockett, who is – for all intents and purposes, the number one receiver. They put him on DK probably because they feel like DK is the more dynamic of the two. Uh, Lockett may be faster, but not by much. And Metcalf is obviously bigger and stronger. And he shut him down. He caught no passes. Zero. DK Metcalf. I started this guy in fantasy. Zero receptions. And yeah, Lockett no receptions, had, really? None. 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 And Lockett only had one. Wow. That's half your offense. And then the running backs go down. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 I mean, if the running backs, if Carson doesn't go down, maybe it's a different game. But once once the Cardinals realized that he had to throw, <laughs> it, it was all she wrote, man. They were all over him. Oh, and kudos to Brett Hundley. Brett Hundley. Brett Hundley came Aaron in. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is old backup. He didn't have a lot of success when he had to play in Green Bay, but showed some flashes. Came out there, and I almost couldn't figure out if it was him or Kyler Murray. I th- Running that air raid, man. Doesn't Murray wear number one? Uh, I forget what he wears. Yeah, he yeah. wears number one, and, and, and Brett Hundley wears number seven. So it almost looked like the same number, but I'm like, but he's too tall right. to be Kyler Murray. I mean, he ran that offense really, really well. Really well. He only had to throw the ball four times, and he ran for like 35 yards on scrambles and stuff. So the, 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 real, um, the real story of that game for the Cardinals was Kenyon Drake. Uh. Kenyon Drake, fantasy owners. Kenyon Drake, put him high on your running back list for the draft next year in fantasy. Kenyon Drake is the real deal. 166 okay. yards rushing. 24 carries. Cliff Four Kingsbury, four. my man. <laughs> 24 carries for his running back. 166 and two touchdowns. That's amazing. It could be another reason DK didn't get any passes because uh, Russell didn't have the ball. No, he, he had it enough. He got sacked five times. <laughs> That's another reason he didn't get any passes. <laughs> Believe me, if I had the hurry stats down here. <laughs> yeah. He was all over. They were all over him. Very good game. I was really glad to see that. Went back and saw that. Last game of the weekend, Kansas City Chiefs, Chicago Bars. Kansas City looked good, looked easy. That was uh, – they were favored by a bias plus score of 8.3. Score was 26-3, to 3, Kansas City. Uh, they – the Bears, you ready for this? trubisky did up a little bit. And not just on Trubisky. I think the Bears in general, trubisky did up a little bit. Yeah, I don't – I guess they're out of it playoff-wise now yeah. because – Minnesota and Green Bay are just so far ahead of them in their division. They don't really have a chance at anything. Um, I don't want to say they mailed it in, but Kansas City had really had it going. Um, Shady was a was a healthy scratch for this game. 
So I think they held him out to make sure they had a full complement of backs going into the playoffs. Damian Williams, who had been injured, came back and had a really good game. And they played a couple other backs, too, so they spread it around a little bit. Um, and Mahomes is Mahomes. I mean, man, they're going to be dangerous. I tell you, I, I, I can't call it, man. This is going to be this is going to be something in the playoffs. Mahomes, Brady, Jackson. Who's the fourth quarterback that in the AFC that you want to throw in there with those names? Um. Oh, gee, I don't know. I wish I could throw Josh Allen in there. Uh, I'm sure there's somebody a little bit more dynamic than him. Tannehill's going to be a problem if Tennessee can pull it off next week. Um. Yeah, that's that's about it. Those those are your top guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and Deshaun. Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yep. Can't forget that. Can't forget that. No doubt about it. All right. So uh, for the week, the bias plus was nine for sixteen. That's and that's assume that's taking into account the tie that we had at zero zero between Houston and Tampa Bay. I took that as a loss. There was no way I could win that with a tie. So we nine for sixteen is fifty six percent. A little surprising. The bigger surprises uh, was probably the um, the Cardinals Seattle. That was a big surprise. The Eagles over Dallas. I don't know if that was a big surprise, but I was you know they were not favored. Yeah, uh, considering the rivalry, I would say that wasn't a surprise, considering the rivalry. Considering the rivalry. Didn't trust the Chargers were for darn, and they came through on the distrust thing for me. <laughs> uh, Cincinnati uh, couldn't handle the Dolphins, uh, so they were they were favored, but you had to figure they were and both the in the negative. Yeah. And, the Steelers, and the Steelers losing. Right, exactly. Right, so that's a bunch of surprises. This usually you have like two, three surprises. That's a bunch of surprises, and I was nine for sixteen also. So, you know, and I and I didn't have a tie to. <laughs> <laughs> I straight lost that, John. <laughs> All right, well that wraps up the review of Week 16 of the 2019 NFL season. Next up is the Bias Plus report for week 17, also known as the matchup show. The matchup show. All right, Benny, in this section, we're going to do the Bias Plus report for week 17 of the 2019 season, the final regular season weekend of the NFL schedule. It's the final game, man. <laughs> you gonna get all melancholy on me now again? Christy, man. Oh, come on, man. Believe me, the playoffs, the playoffs are gonna be stunning. The the playoffs are gonna be great. I guarantee it. I just picture a future where we're so hungry for football, we'll be tuning into the XFL. Oh God! Now you're making me <laughs> sick to my stomach now. <laughs> Tuning in, looking for what's the, what's the name of the wrestling guy in charge of it? Uh, Vince McMahon. Vince God, McMahon. Like, screw that, man. NBA NBA is really good this year. I'm, <laughs> I'm sticking with the NBA. Yeah, I'll be fine. All right, all right. Well, I'm, I I might tune in. I just I got to see a little bit of what they're doing. You know, because it's football, what can I tell you? And it'll come at a time when, although we have basketball, my dry spell, and I will have beaten my poor Madden game to death. So <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll even need a reprieve from that. All right, let's get started, man. First game, every day, everything's on Sunday, first and foremost. No more Monday night, no more Thursday night. Everything's on Sunday. Oh, man, Red Zone going to be rocking. Red Zone's going to be rocking on Sunday. Uh, I think I had, yeah, I got the schedule here. So most, let's see, we don't get to a four o'clock game. There's a, ooh, it looks almost like split. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that eight four o'clock games? And then you got the, 
My Niners closing out the season. Wow, amazing. And we'll talk about the big news and all the things going on with that. But let's start. New York Jets at Buffalo. Bias plus score 10.9 favors the Bills. What you got? I got the Bills. I got the Bills all the way. They're going to show the Steelers what a real defense looks like against a team like the Jets. They will handle the Jets with no problem. Chalk it up for the Bills. Just when Sam Darnold looked like he was starting to get his feet under him, he's like, uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, no. no. <laughs> Not, this ain't happening like that. Okay. All right. Next up. Let's see here. We get our little technicals together here. Bam and bam. All right. Next up, we have Cleveland Browns at Cincinnati Bengals. Back to the Ohio Bowl again. Bias plus score, 7.6 favors. The Browns. Huh. Huh. The Browns, you say. I'm going <laughs> against the bias. I'm oh. taking the Bengals. I thought you I'm said taking... they were tanking for what was left after Tua. Rivalry. Rivalry? Really? Yeah, they've already played as bad as they can play, and losing another game for a draft pick against the Browns just seems sacrilegious. They got to go They gotta go all out on this one. <laughs> sacrilegious. All right, look, I'm going to have to ban you from using words you can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> what? S-A-C-K. <laughs> C-K. Sack. E-L-I. What? Sack <laughs> <Soccer> blue. <laughs> no, I don't think so. All right. We have the Washington team that needs to Notice that I put the little uh, sign there so that you can go to the bottom and see where it says team that needs to change their name. <laughs> <laughs> In case you didn't know. In case you didn't know. Dallas Cowboys, buys plus score, 14.5 favors. Dallas Cowboys, who you got? 14.5, that's hefty. Now we're doing averages. That's a little more than two touchdowns. I say they win by two touchdowns and a field goal. The Cowboys will win this game. Will that play? Dak will play. Well, they bring in the backup that we don't know his name. No, no, no. Dak will play. Dak will get treatment all week long. Game's not till Sunday. He'll be okay. Well, he'll be better than he was this past Sunday. We'll put it that way. And let me say, you mentioned in the last segment that uh, Amari Cooper, that there's rumors that he tapped out. I've heard that when they interviewed the head coach for the Cowboys, he said that that was an offensive coordinator decision. And apparently they've got some kind of rotation going on, a la the Eagles. And at one point they like, well, they had, I guess they had sent Amari on a number of fly patterns and they were like trying to give him a quick blow, you know. Okay. But the same thing happened with Zeke when they were in like third and short situations and he's not in there. I mean, even if you're not going to run it, just have them in there for the fake of it. You know, didn't we learn anything from the Denver Broncos in the Super Bowl when um, TD had the, the, had the, the uh, a migraine headache? Right. He said he couldn't see. Couldn't even see. But he's like, if you're not in there, they're not going to buy the fake. Didn't we learn anything? You learned something. <laughs> I learned something. But evidently, the Cowboys coaching staff did not learn anything. Oh, my goodness. This is a play you got to have if you have any expectations of winning this game. And to have a short yardage situation without Zeke or a fourth down, and I must have this first down, and you don't have Amari Cooper on the field. I don't care if you run him off and throw the ball to Jason Witten. He's got to be out there. First off, it's Zeke, right? So in the Madden world, I can tell you that if I'm playing someone and they're playing with the Cowboys, they're going to run Zeke right at me Yep. and then hurry right back up to the line of scrimmage and possibly run him right back at me again. Yeah. 
third and two. Because if you're going to get at least a yard with Zeke, unless right. your line gets really just loses that battle. Some guys know? just don't go backwards. He just doesn't go backwards. And he's a tunneler. He'll tunnel underneath everybody and get, get those yards, man. And, but then again, you can come, you know, if you got the, the, the two plays called, you can come back and fake the handoff and probably roll out and there's naturally nobody in the flat because they'll all be right back there on Zeke. So, you know, this is the stuff that the deception and, and, and the use of fourth down that the, that the Ravens are using, uh, that some of these other uh, coaches are going to have to really begin to, to understand. It's, you know, turning into a Madden game out there, man. You better be ready for it, you know. <laughs> all right, what do we have up next here? Packers, Lions, bias plus score, 9.7, favors the Packers over the Lions. I think the Lions are, are kind of stick a fork in them. What do you think? I agree. Stick a fork in them. That 9.7 um, is, is not going to be indicative of how this game goes. This may be a game, and I think the Packers maybe could use the win for home field or something. Uh, they locked up the division, I'm pretty sure, with that last win. Um, so it's possible that if they get ahead, um, Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones may get pulled. Um, but that would only uh, that would only bother fantasy people, probably. Um, real life, they, they should be good to go. I don't think they'll have any trouble handling the lines. All right, so you're going with the bias on that one? Yes, sir. All right, all right. Next up, them stinking Chargers at Kansas City Chiefs. Last plus score of 10.4 favors the Chiefs. That's a little over touchdown, about a touchdown in the field goal right there. Good 10 points on average. They're beating everybody by, um, what do you think? Chiefs are at home. The weather will probably be bad, cold at least. The Chargers have basically no life left in them. Uh, this should be an easy win for the Chiefs. They should be able to rest a, a few people, too, by the end of the third quarter. Okay, going with the bias on that one. Not a problem. Next up, we have – hey, we're moving right along here. The Chicago Bars at Minnesota Vikings. The Bears are going to go into Viking land with a uh, bias plus of 9.4, favoring those Vikings – and uh, as long as it's not on Monday night, it looks like <laughs> the Vikings might be viable, That's viable squad. Poor Kirk Cousins. You know, it's always something, man. This guy hasn't won on a Monday night, and now they're putting that on the Vikings. Oh, yeah, and won a night. Stop. Let the guy, let him live. Let him live. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. The Bears are pretty much stick a, in stick a fork in them territory also. And the Vikings really need this game. So I, if they're going to have any, any chance of keeping pace with the Packers and, and maybe improving their seed or getting a home game or whatever it is that they're fighting for, uh, they got to win this game. And this is a very winnable game for them. Let me mention just real quick, uh, if, if you hear noise in the background, this is Christmas and there are people here making noise. <laughs> That's okay. It's Christmas. <laughs> All right, what's up next? Let me see here. I don't think I had it. Did I check it? Oh, I didn't set it up. Let's set it up right here. Let's get it done. And we will move into the next game on the Bias Plus Report. Oh, this is a tough one. Ah. <laughs> Dude, but some of the strangest things have happened in the game with the Dolphins and the Patriots. Again, division... Oh, the logic can go out the window. The bias plus score of 28.2 favors the Patriots. I mean, that's that's definitely the biggest bias of the weekend. Um, and the, the Dolphins is, are not going to lay down. They're just not going to do it. No, they're not. They're not. They're, their coach is not going to let them lay down. I don't think they want to lay down. I think Fitzpatrick is going to take the challenge and he's going to talk up the offense. And I think the defense is just going to go uh, balls out, as they say. I mean, let's face it. There's no dynamic pass receivers 
on the Patriots team, except for Edelman. So they're going to go in there feeling pretty good. But it will be in New England, and uh, the weather will be bad. So that won't be a good thing for the Dolphins. But if they go all out and they make this – turn this into like a real game and it's close – or they're riding a little bit of a lead, it's possible that Brady and a couple of people come out of the game. I mean, if they're, if they're still in contention late into the third, early into the fourth quarter, it's possible that the Patriots give them this game. But I'm going to pick the Patriots because I have to. <laughs> they're, they're the far better team. They may rest people and they may not, but I, I, I'm, I'm going to go with the Patriots. <laughs> You're right. This, this is a scary game. Strange things have happened in this game. Look, it, it can only be stranger if it was being played on Halloween, man. That's about it. All right, here you go, Ben. What are you going to do? Are you going to, is your team going to be the ultimate <laughs> spoiler in the <laughs> NFC? With the Philadelphia Eagles being favored with a bias plus score of 7.8. That's a little over a touchdown. And they need to win this. Well, wait, the Eagles, they, the Eagles kind of have a spot, right? The only question with them is seeding, right? Can they afford to lose this game at all? I believe that if they win, they are in. That's the advantage that they have over Dallas. Dallas needs to win, and they need the Eagles to lose. The Eagles simply need to win, and what Dallas does will not matter because they have the tiebreaker. So that's a real good thing for the Eagles. They battled. They won that last week game, that game last week. Their fans are ecstatic. It looks like after all the problems and all the injuries and you know, we found this guy, Boston, who's like a, a, a Sproles clone, and, and Sanders has, has emerged, and now there's word that Jordan Howard may be back, and, and oh, D-Jax might be able to make it to this game. And Well, they let Ajayi go. Yeah, well, they shouldn't have picked him up in the first place. That was a wasted paycheck. <laughs> that, was, okay. yeah, that was a wasted paycheck. He was done when he was here the first time. But um, it's going to be a sad day in Philadelphia next week. A sad day in Philadelphia? After all the, bias? all the work that they did, after that great performance, and it was a great performance last week, and pulling out a game that they had to have with all the problems that they have. If I was an Eagles fan, I'd be proud as heck of my team. After all of that, and this supposedly – feel good situation going into this Sunday. It's going to be a sad day when Danny Dimes and Saquon put the kibosh on all this playoff talk in this city. That's right. It's the end of the season. I'm letting loose. Y'all done. Y'all done. Holy mackerel, Andy. Uh, <laughs> he's throwing down the gauntlet for the Giants. Saquon, 200 yards, Danny Dimes, four touchdowns. What else you need to beat uh, Wentz and the boys there? You know? Well, I mean, they're gonna they're gonna have to they're gonna have to play some defense now. No doubt about it. They're gonna have to play some defense. Maybe they'll get a little help from from the Eagles coaching staff, who may do like some of these other teams have done uncharacteristically, not run the ball enough, or think that because Djax is back, they can throw a couple of bombs. Or, you know, Jordan Howard coming back sounds like a good thing, but it might not be. You know, before he got hurt, he had pretty much established himself as the number one back. And Sanders has now, as far as I'm concerned, established himself as the number one back. I don't think Howard had a big enough lead that, okay, he's back from injury, so now he just reclaims his spot in the pecking order. So now it falls on Deuce Staley to make the right moves, to have the right back in at the right time. And we've seen them screw that up before. Well, the, um, 
the box plus at one touchdown isn't big, so you know, not at all, not at all. Viability to what you're talking about there, you know, there might be some viability to that. All right, so you're going against the bias, going with the G man, going with his boys, he's standing up tall. All right, the Falcons and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This actually is a candidate to me for intriguing game. Um, because the Falcons can score. Huh? I'm putting the poo-poo, the poo-poo on this one, man. You putting the poo on this one? Yeah, man. Okay, why? Go ahead. Uh, number one is two teams playing for absolutely nothing except for pride, contracts, and get something good on tape for when they get cut. Or that ain't jobs. nothing. That, uh, the only thing is it makes it look probably – a, a, a little more like a track meet, not maybe not as much hard defense being played. Okay, that could be. You, 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 know? you got something there. You got Jameis, man. Jameis, Jameis might have an opportunity to break two or three records or something if he throws for another three, four hundred yards. I mean, the Falcons are scoring on everybody that you don't expect them to be able to score on. Yeah, that's God. true. That's why it's there. And the bias plus at two point four is the smallest. Of the weekend. Okay. So for those things, I could say there, there there could possibly be some intrigue there. It may be a fun game to watch. Maybe an exciting game to watch. It probably will be an exciting game to watch. I'm going to take Atlanta, you know, because I just think they're the better team overall. But um, that one could go either way. Going against the bias, eh? Yeah, that one could go either way. I'm going against the bias. Atlanta doesn't have the bias. Oh my! Tampa oh, Bay my. Buccaneers, baby! Wow, two point four. Okay, all right. Well, yeah. In that case, yes, I'm going against the bias. All right, going against the bias. Not okay. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I, I, I. You know. The, you know, I, I, I thought about last week, I think I said, you know, why would I want to go with, you know, an intriguing game with two teams that aren't really in the uh, playoffs? And then I picked two teams. Yeah. Well, at least as a candidate, I haven't really decided absolutely yet. But, I mean, really, um, I, I see some, some sparks going on there. All right. Next up. New Orleans Saints, Carolina Panthers, bias plus 13.7 favorites the Saints. I know you're not going with the Panthers. Absolutely not. All right. There's no way I can go against uh, go with the Panthers. They are uh, a pretty jacked up team at the moment. Um, they might not even keep McCaffrey in the game for fear of him getting injured. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't play him much. Um, also, the, the Saints may find themselves in a position if they get out on them early, which they probably will, that they can sit down Mr. Breeze and Mr. Kamara and, and definitely Mr. Thomas. So I don't know how good a game this will be. Oh, but you know what that means? That means we get to see some Taysom, baby. I, hey, look, I was hey. getting to say, they might go full full born Ravens offense and say in New Orleans on us with Taysom Hill running stuff and have everybody screwed up for the playoffs. We're like that we don't know who's gonna happen. show up here. What which that team could, that could happen. Or or they could really showcase Teddy because Teddy's gonna get traded. They're gonna get a haul for Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, yeah, they're gonna they're believe me. They're, they're going to trade Teddy Bridgewater. They love them some Taysom Hill. And they're going to trade Teddy Bridgewater, and they're going to get picks up the yin-yang, or they're going to get something really high that's going to really help their team. So they may either throw him in there to showcase him, or they might not play him at all to make sure that he's 100% going into next year so they could get a King's Ransom for him. So either way, I think we're going to get a good dose of some Taysom Hill, and that's going to be fun to watch. That's always fun. All right. Indianapolis Colts at Jacksonville Jaguars. Ah, Basketball score 8.4 favors the Colts. Yeah, take the Colts. That's a stinker. Take the Colts. Take the Colts. 
going with the bias on that one. Not uh, not a big uh, a big thing there. All right. What do we have next up here? Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. There's not. I, this was not on my on my intriguing game. It better not be. <laughs> Baltimore Ravens hosting the Steelers with a bias plus of fifteen point three, favoring the Ravens. Steelers don't even know who their second string quarterback is, but we will see some second string quarterbacking from the Ravens because they're sitting their people RG three, baby, or maybe even a little bit of, um, what's, what's the guy's name from Penn state? Who? Tom McSorley? You might see some McSorley. Oh my God. <laughs> That'd be, that would be wonderful. If they can get down to McSorley, that'd be great. But uh, Bobby Griffin should get a good amount. Oh, of wait, hold it, hold it, hold it. I thought you was back to calling him RG3. No. Nah. Why? Because he's only good. I got you on tape, man. I thought he had, he had won back at least the RG3 status from you. <laughs> back to calling him Bobby Griffin again. I tell you what. If he has a good game in this game, because I, I can't give him nothing off of preseason. He must have had a pre a good preseason game or something. And I was like, oh, I'm, yeah, this is going to be great. You know, he can run this offense. I'm going to call him RG3 again. I probably was drinking or something. <laughs> but, but even though this is week 17, if he plays well in this game, I will restore RG3 status back to him. Re knight him again, RG3. You are knighted RG3. Yes. Again. Yes. <laughs> all right, all right. But yeah, we should, we're gonna see some uh some of the backups and uh and and you know, see what kind of backup running back they got for Ingram. They might just they don't think they don't play either. So <laughs> Oh, they got plenty of backs. Yeah, yeah. Gus so. Edwards, um uh Justice Hill. Uh they got they got like three more. We'll see how effective and efficient they are um, in running that offense. Tennessee Titans <clears throat> at Houston Texans. Now, you know, this, this is, has to be an intriguing game candidate. This it has is. to be. This is, yeah, this is the, there's only three, and this is third, three of three right here. The first one actually was the Buffalo Jets game. Uh, I thought that. What? Yeah, that, you know. I want to see what the Jets do, you know, and, and, and how they how they compete with with Buffalo. Um, that you know they're they're uh, they're in that situation, like you said, uh, plan for contracts and all of that kind of good stuff. So we'll see. Mm. But last first score two point six favors the Titans. The wow. Shots a little inconsistent. Okay, so. Both teams need this game, if I'm not mistaken. Probably for different – well, the Titans got to win to get in. And they may need some help. I'm not exactly sure. But if they don't win the game, they have no shot, as far as I know. So they got to go all out for this one. The Texans have not played great. It seems like when Will Fuller doesn't play, Deshaun – uh, has a little trouble. Um, and you, you can't just lean on Hopkins like that. I mean, it, if he throws the ball to Hopkins like 12, 14 times, that's a lot of targets for one guy. Not saying he hasn't ever done that before or that that might not be a good idea. But, I mean, let's face it, everybody doubles him. So they're not going to make it easy for him. Uh, and the Titans' defense is uh, fairly – High, I don't want to say highly ranked, but they're they're in the upper echelon. So um, I'm going to take the Titans. Uh, it's it's not a, a big big upset to me, and it's not a, and it's with the bias. So the bias agrees with me. Um, I think the Titans have earned where they're at, and I think they've played well enough to be a viable playoff team. And I'm going with them. All righty, Rooney, let's see who's up next. Oakland Raiders at Denver Broncos. Score 4.9 favors the Broncos. Yes. 
Yes, and I'm going with the Broncos. Again, going with the bias. Hopefully me and the bias don't uh, be the mirror image on the bad side again. You know, <laughs> only winning 56% of games, that's a little lackluster. But I tell you what, it's going to be cold, smile high. Uh, Drew Locke wants to come in the next season as the number one quarterback, which he probably will anyway. Um, they're not going to draft a quarterback. That he's, he's pretty much the man. So his whole end of the season since he's been back from injury is all about proving that they made the right decision bringing him in. And, and it was a good decision for them to be patient with him with his injury. And now he's trying to pay dividends and he will continue to do that against a very lackluster Raiders defense. Going with the bias. All right. Back to the NFC West. I like to call them the NFC best. Arizona Cardinals at the LA Rams. Last plus 5.8 favors the Rams. But the Cardinals is about the upset nowadays, baby. They about the upset. I don't know why I'm getting excited about them guys. They're going to be trying to upset my darn Niners pretty soon. But uh, who you got? I'm going with the Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You buying that whole upset thing. Eh? I'm going with the Cardinals. Now, I would like to put a little caveat on that, but I, I'm not going to. I wanted to say, you know, once I'm sure that Kyler Murray is going to play, I'm going with the Cardinals. But supposedly he's got a hammy, and uh, it's pretty minor. So I think he's going to play. So on the strength of that, I will go with him. Now, if he does not play and they don't win, I'll still take the L with no excuses. But so I'm kind of giving you my excuse now. <laughs> you know, but guess what? I like the way Brett Hundley looked back there running that offense. I, I, I think if they have to, they'll open the playbook up a little bit more for him and they can still beat the Rams. We're going to continue that conversation that we can always have about uh, balancing out that paycheck between your first and your second string quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Um you're the on the uh the show with uh uh speak for yourself or with Whitley or them guys. Yeah. Um big conversation about the contract, the kind of money that's being paid to quarterbacks today. Uh one argument was like, well, that's what the position gets now, you know, and the other argument was like these guys are not play, paying, playing, excuse me, like franchise quarterbacks, but they're getting franchise quarterback money. And uh, there's only a handful of real franchise quarterbacks if you're talking about top-notch quarterback, depending on how you define franchise. I mean, if he's your quarterback of your franchise, then he's in effect a franchise quarterback. But, you know, if you expect that he's the quarterback at, uh, uh, one of the guys I was watching some college uh, stuff. They were talking uh, foot, uh, football, and the, the one coach said that when Bucky Brooks, I think, is who it was. Okay, um, talking about evaluating talent. He's like, you know, you look when you want to see if is this the guy that's like the truck that can carry the team, or is this the guy that's on the truck and he needs the team to kind of carry him, you know, that type of thing. But long story short. <laughs> Uh, you look at the Steelers situation with their backup quarterbacks. Um, and even with the Saints and Taysom Hill, uh, I don't think the Saints want Taysom Hill to be the backup. I think they like him as, as Agent X, you know, with, that, with the, having that, that backup. So, you know, I hear what you're saying about Teddy. I don't know if I'm quite buying that, though. I think, I think that the Saints – you know, knowing that Drew Brees is how old he is, and, and if they're going to move forward, they're going to move forward with they're going to want Teddy and Taysom if Drew Brees is not there. So that combination, I think, is a winning combination because you can run any of those types of offenses, and I do believe that emulation is happening with the options. So there we go with that. All right, where were we here? Let's see. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And the only reason this one is not an intriguing game candidate is because it's your team. 
is because it's my team, the San Francisco, my beloved 49ers that going into Seattle, much less. Seattle's not coming to Levi Stadium. We got to go in there. 9.6 favors my Niners. Uh, again, you know, we, we've been giving up a lot of points. When I look at the last three weeks in terms of points against, we are literally 31st giving up 35.3 average points per game over the last three weeks. Um, the uh, big news is they're bringing back beast mode and ProSize, which I actually am a little more thinking about. If I remember, ProSize was faster. I think ProSize is hurt. Huh? ProSize is hurt. So they're not going to bring him? No, they brought back um, Turbin. Turbin. Again, another guy who had a little more speed, I think, than Beast Mode. Right. A, a, a former Seahawk who was a little, little bit on the speedier side, yes. So now that's their new one two punch. Um, I don't know what those guys got in the tank. You know, neither one of them has played for at least a year. Uh, it's going to be interesting. This is going to be a real interesting game. It, I don't, you know, uh, when 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 Marshawn retired, uh, he was not coming off of a really good season. He showed some flashes, but he really couldn't get going. And I don't know. I guess it was a combination of him, you know, losing a step and the Raiders' offensive line not being able to really open up holes. Um, but it'll be interesting to watch. I can't. I can't wait. I want to see him run somebody over at least one or two times. <laughs> I think everybody does. Yeah. Um, let me first say again. I play the franchise schedule, so I had to play this game against the Seahawks. I didn't have to worry about beast mode because within the franchise world, he wasn't a part of all of that. Um, and I think I told you that I um, I switched playbooks in the middle of the season and went over to the Ravens playbook. Right. Um, and I'm beginning to uh, really start to feel comfortable in my in my adjustments and changes and moving through the playbook and my schemes that I work out of that playbook. Um, being that it's the Christmas holiday, we had a little company yesterday and uh, one of my son's friends came by and uh, played me twice. Um, didn't score in either game. <laughs> and my, the second game, it was third quarter, it was up 28 nothing. And he's like, okay, that's enough. I'm out. <laughs> like, you quitting on me like everybody else. Everybody's quitting on me in this game, man. What the heck, you know? But I like that offense. I like all of the uh, the pistol options and the things that you can do, you know, um, just getting quick passes off without having, you know, with minimum effort with minimum movement there's no three-step drop there i like i like that stuff and uh and it, it, i can work it with garoppolo that's that's this crazy thing so in this particular game yes i won i put up 55 points on these oh. in this game Jeez. <laughs> yeah yeah and that's that's with two interceptions one return for a touchdown by the seahawks yeah, got a little sloppy in the second quarter, man, and they they put up a little bit of a of a of a fight there. But then, you know, I started grooving on my what I was doing, and boom, next thing I know, and then I had two, I think, two, um, three interceptions, two return for a touchdown. Richard mm -hmm. Sherman had one. He gets all the way to the one yard line and gets tackled by. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious. They yeah, just reminding you he's getting old. <laughs> but by Russell, much less. That's that's the irony hey, of it. Hey. Russell ran him down, stopped him at the one. Hey. Getting in. So your old boy. <laughs> your boy. Yeah. Uh, well, unfortunately, uh Kyle Shanahan will not be using the Ravens playbook on Sunday. <laughs> unfortunately, and he says, uh oh. <laughs> I smell. I'm taking the Seahawks. Oh my goodness! Oh, the Seahawks to bounce back. back. They're gonna bounce back. They're gonna shake up the playoff picture. The sleep, my sleeper team. He's the sleeper team is gonna take my sleeper team down. Is DK gonna do anything? 
you doggone right he is. Lock it is too. <laughs> they have to. They're going to have to lean on them guys, man. People think Beast Mode is going to come back and have 150 yards rushing. I don't see that happening. You know First what I think is got a, a, a 50-50 shot at Beast Mode being on the injured list. By the end of the game, collecting the that, check yes. or whatever yes. you can collect out of injury. Right. <laughs> now, they did say, they did say that um, he started working out around midseason or so, or a little earlier than that, just to be prepared in case somebody went down. Um, so, yeah, oh. It was when Rashad Penny got hurt and was out for the season. He's like, oh, they might need a backup for Carson. Let me start getting myself together just in case they call. And then when Carson went down, I know he was like, oh, where's my phone? Where's my phone? (laughs) You know? So he got the call. But, again, getting in conditioning and, you know, they showed him working out and some guy was punching him in the ribs and in the stomach. and That ain't playing for him. Be yeah, that's out of them. That part of that was part of his prep. Yeah, but that's not that's not football. <laughs> you know, that, that ain't Joey Bosa coming. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that ain't Eric Armstead. <laughs> Those yeah, he's not. he's not going to like it. If no, you know. This is not the game that you want to come out of a short term retirement. No, no, <laughs> not at all. You want to come out against on the Raiders other side. or somebody. <laughs> you know, get your feet wet a little bit. You would hope, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Right. But you're still going with the Seahawks, though. I'm going with the Seahawks. Shame, shame, shame on you. Hey, look, I, I'm going with the Seahawks. I, I, I trust <laughs> Russell. All right. I have to say, I don't know if there's a sense of pride that I can take in being the final game of the 2019 season. and That's the game that they chose. Monday, Sunday night, excuse me, no Monday night football, Sunday night, last game of the 2019 season. I think it's going to be a heck of a game uh, also because, again, you just have Russell. He's just really good, and he's going to pull that train a little bit. He's going to create, and he's going to be doing the thing. And you know we struggle with those mobile quarterbacks. Keep your eye on Bosa. And he, because he bites on fakes really hard. Yeah. And, um, you know, they, they tried that with the, they ran a lot of that type of stuff with the Rams very successfully for the first two or three quarters. It took us a minute to go, duh, we can't bite on that fake every time he rolls right because he's going to turn, turn around, throw it back left. So, yep. you know, that, that's the thing. <laughs> with that. um, and, you know, with the running game, uh, with, proper use of Kittle, you know, especially in, in turnover down situations, you know, you, you know, you should be able to target him completing those third downs, keeping Russell on the sideline. And I think if we can do those things, uh, the bias plus will hold, but the intriguing game of the week, I'm going to go with the Tennessee Houston game. You have to. Come on. I would have been disappointed if you didn't. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, two ascending quarterbacks here, uh, stories. You know, the the, the Tennessee Titans have a story there with their quarterback. Um, We got a question. We got to see Deshaun. You know, you got, you know, hopefully not so much the magician as much as a little more of, of a point guard. And, you know, running that offense efficiently and, and getting rid of the ball and not holding on to it too long, those types of things. So we'll see who comes through there. So um, that's going to be the intriguing game of the week. That means I got to get started because that's where my blog will be at the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings. All right, Ben and Barry, we're finished with the segment on the Bias Plus Report for week 17 of the 2019 NFL season. Uh, next up, some information, some commentary, and a quick trip through our Facebook page. All right, so Benny, in this section, we're going to take a quick look at our Facebook page and talk about a few of the things that uh, are somewhat newsworthy here 
Uh, I put this link up. Thoughts from a first year offensive coordinator. The, you know, when you take on a job with that type of responsibility for the first time, you know, as you're moving up the coaching ranks, this, you know, he really put out a nice written piece about all of the mental things that he had to go through, the things he forced himself to get better at, to go through his, uh, that feeling of discomfort and all of the, the things that happened. And it's like with any job, if you, you know, if you and I got a job or a new manager, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you get that management title, you did that, you know what I mean? Uh, you had, you, you actually had people who worked uh, and under you as a supervisor, right? Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So my management title was in marketing. You know, we don't have, <laughs> we didn't have anybody reporting to us. Um, but by the same token, it was a job that I had never really done at that level before. And I remember being challenged by it. So I thought this was a very interesting read. And that's why that was there. I don't know if you had a chance to see that or not. Eagles, uh, Darren Sproles, congratulations, going in, into retirement. You have any good things to say about Darren Sproles? Uh, Darren Sproles had himself a nice little career. Uh, if we go way back to San Diego Chargers, Darren Sproles, he was quite the beastly running back for his size. He was really, really fast. Some people think he's still fast, but this cat could really fly. And he had the power to run people over. He was kind of a little bit smaller type MJD, Maurice Jones Drew. Right. Where he was a very – Quicker. Yeah, he was quicker, quicker, definitely quicker. Um, Maurice Jones Drew was, was a little more of a power back. But uh, either way, always had the uh, pass catching ability but really could run between the tackles, get outside on wide running plays, and be extremely dangerous. And um, then uh, they traded him to the Saints, and I believe he continued to be a really, really good ball player, a really, really uh, viable part of their offense also. Uh, trading a guy like him had to be hard because you couldn't say anything bad about the guy. Obviously, a good teammate. Everybody always liked him, and he produced. So, yeah, really nice career for Darren Sproles. Congratulations on your great career, and hopefully retirement will be uh, will work out well for you. He's already got a commercial for Cure Auto, so. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, um, we always question the rotation of the Eagle backs and how he got used, but, you know, long story short, congratulations. All right, next up. This article came up um, with Malcolm Jenkins right there as a, as a picture of for, representing the article. Why the next Philly police contract may not be negotiated behind closed doors. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, this is your Players Coalition. Uh, being involved in grassroots. And I think um, if you remember, I mentioned maybe a week or two ago when we were talking about Kaepernick and, and I mentioned that Malcolm Jenkins was part of an organization, was part of a group um, that was trying to uh, have the police um, have to deal with an independent board when it came time for disciplining their own. A board of citizens, correct? Yeah, I think, you know, it might have been mixtures, you know, of, of people, but it was an independent board. So it wasn't just the police evaluating the police, you know, and and apparently there's some real questions about the contract. And again, it's been done behind closed doors all this time. So this would be one of the first times where this organization is going to get them to open up uh, and let people know what's being uh, negotiated and, and why. Uh, when police do something, they seem to be able to, you know, get away with it in Philadelphia. Uh, so I had to give them kudos on that. I don't know if you had a chance to see that or not. All right. All right. Next up, let's see here. 
I mentioned that. <laughs> I, mean, I had to. I had to share. You know, put this up on our page for people to take a look. Man, this guy has a turbo booster in his caboose. I mean, once he gets a step and starts to accelerate, to check because you know Madden has an acceleration uh, uh, stat for everybody. You know. Okay. And I, I'm I'm interested to see what they have him as. But maybe because he was kind of coming out a backup, you know, they might not have him quite accurate. Sometimes they, you know, they need they need a little more playing time for they get a little more accurate. But I can't see that they're too much off of him. He's got to be in the 90s for acceleration in the 90 percentile. So did you get a chance to see him at all? I did see uh, those returns uh, on red zone and um, and watched them again on the. Um, the montage at the end. Uh, yeah, great runs, uh, great vision, knew exactly when to turn on the speed. Uh, I do not believe that he has been their full-time punt returner. No. Until recently. No, right? you're right. You're okay. right. So, so now he's maybe found himself uh, something extra to do there on that team. He is the backup to Marlon Mack. Uh, they really do like Marlon Mack. I think Marlon Mack is a better overall running back, and, and he's been kind of the third down back. But there's nothing wrong with being the third down back and 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 a and a really good kick returner. Uh, so that's that should work out well for him if he can keep it up. That's how I utilize a monster, you know, uh, in the game, knowing that he had the speed and that capability. He was the third back in that group. So I can see that, man. But this guy is, uh, you know, two touchdowns off kicks, you know, in that game. Man, blowing Yeah, two in, this, two in the same game. That's that's Deion, San, Deion Sanders like. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that's that's something that's historic. That's historic. Okay. We've done it all. The top 12. Last week's Bias Plus report, where we both came out at about a little under 60%, right? Yeah. Uh, 56%, uh, which is a, a, at this late stage is a little surprising. But again, this is a grand experiment where we're tracking the net points and the bias. Uh, which is the difference in the net points and the, and the turnover differential. We looked at um, next week or this coming weekend, the final weekend of the 2019 regular season, all games being played on Sunday, finished out with my Niners going against the Seahawks in Seattle. Should be a, a great closeout game. Um, and then all of the playoff seedings will fall into place. And we'll know who's who and who's going to go up against who. Uh, be prepared or, or check out the uh, bias, or excuse me, the um, intriguing game of the week on the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings page on Facebook at Sterling NPPR. We also are on Twitter. We also are on Instagram. And if you go to www.benandbarry.com, you'll go to our Facebook page. We're all, excuse me, our YouTube page, you will go to our YouTube page where all the videos reside. I think I said everything that needs to be said there, Benny. Sounds good. Sounds good. Any last words? Well, let's get ready for some football. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Whatever holiday out there that you celebrate, if you're a football fan, you're with me. I'm with you. Uh, looking forward to seeing some great games this week. Um, rooting hard for the New York football giants. And go Knowles. Go Knowles.